Is it the Mac attack or will youth be served in 2020 next on the voice of college football? Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football, breaking down rosters across the nation. And we check out Alabama with Stephen M. Smith of Touchdown Alabama. Stephen, how are you doing today? Doing fantastic, Mark, and yourself. Doing well, doing well. Great to have you on as we do. This is one of our um, regiments. Certainly every offseason is bringing Stephen to talk uh, Alabama football, to break down the roster for us and position by position. So let's start with the offense. Let's start, of course, with uh, Tua moving on to the NFL and the Miami Dolphins. Uh, his brother is transferred to Maryland. Mac Jones uh, performed capably in his place last year, finished off with a bang with a huge effort against Michigan in the Citrus Bowl. Bryce Young, of course, coming onto campus with all the hype and all the attention as well. Uh, how do you see this quarterback race as it stands right now? Well, right now, Alabama with Steve Sarkeesian has, if not the best, one of the best quarterback rooms in the country. Uh, you mentioned the job that Mac Jones did down the stretch of last year once Tua Tungabangola you know, got hurt. You know, Mac finished the year with 14 touchdowns to just three interceptions, really sort of balanced the offense and Coach Saban. And the team has a lot of trust in him. But he's got the task of thinking off a very talented five-star in Bryce Young and somebody of whom – in every sense of the word, had one of the more illustrious high school careers to, to date. A guy that was just fascinating at the powerhouse modern day high school in California was fascinating that the, you know, all at the, uh, at the uh, Army, all America Bowl had three touchdown passes, two or three touchdown passes in that game. It was the MVP. And when you, people talk about it, they look at him as just as much as a polished, gifted passer as one, two, a tongue of Angola was, that behind those two, you even have a Paul Tyson who is, people look at him as, well, he's just Paul Bear Bryant's great grandson, but bigger than that, and if you would trust your high school in Alabama, a guy that was 19 and 5 as a, as a starter in high school, 69 touchdown passes, just 13 picks, and has put on, you know, more healthy weight, healthy strength to his body. He's now at 6'5. 240 pounds. This is a very, very big time quarterback room. I think as of right now, Matt Jones would start day one, week one of the season. I think Nick Saban will give him that baton to start the year. I do see Bryce Young getting onto the field, getting some reps, getting some snaps. If there is some issues or some difficulty with Jones, but I can see Young getting in more time. But I feel like because of the way you know, Jones came in last year, feeling admirably for an injured Tua, and really earning the trust and the uh, the wherewithal with that team, I do see Jones stepping on the field first uh, against USC and, and taking it from there. Since uh, Nick Saban took over the program, obviously running back has been an enormous strength with some of the great backs in college football over the past, uh, let's see, 13 years, going back to Glenn Coffey, who carried the load almost pretty much, not, I don't want to say by himself, but he was certainly the lead back. And then it turned into a situation where there were always two main guys that were stars in the backfield at Alabama. And that's almost become three or four here in the past few versions of the Tides backfield mix. Of course, Najee Harris is the guy that everybody latches on to first and foremost, coming off a 13-touchdown season with 1,200 yards rushing. How do you see the distribution of carries and workload uh, in the backfield for the Tide, Stephen? Well, behind Najee being the main guy, Mark, uh, the, the number two back or back 1B is going to be very interesting because you've got Brian Robinson, Jr., uh, the Tuscaloosa area, played his high school ball at Hillcrest High School. He came in the 2017 class, the four-star. He improved this past season. Had 441 yards rushing, five touchdowns. He showed he can catch the ball at the backfield, 11 catches for you know, 124 yards. But there were moments last year where he kind of looked at Najee Harris and wanting to take some things from Najee's game. But, you know, Brian Robinson is not a hurdler. He's not a spin-move guy. He's not a really big stiff arm guy. He's more of a throwback, one cut with that cleat in the ground, 
run in between the tackles, be that power guy, you know, run defenders over. He's 6'1", you know, 230, 235 pounds. He's a much bigger back, and it's going to be up to, you know, running backs coach Charles Huff to get him to own in on that ability of being that one-cut guy, being that aggressive guy, and using that strength of, you know, plowing guys over to his advantage. So, you know, the 1B type of guy, it could be Brian Robinson, but also Trey Sanders, of whom he comes from the Florida area with a five-star in the 2019 class and was having a killer, you know, off-season camp, summer camp, not summer camp, fall camp, prior to a foot injury happening that did not allow him to get action, you know, at all last season. So he's back, and fans want to see what he can do on the field. The 1B perspective would come down between Brian Robinson or Trey Sanders, who wants it more. And then there's Keenan Robinson out of the uh, Washington, D.C. area, who showed fans last year that I have a Kenyon Drake type of burst in my game. He had two rushing touchdowns a season ago, and Coach Saban called him the guy with the shoes, the guy with the speed, the burst, the athleticism once he hits the hole and gets to the open field. So, you know, you have, you have him into the equation. And then you also have three freshmen. That's your sign for the 2020 class in uh, Jace McClellan, Roy Dale Williams, and also Kyle Edwards. So, Coach Saban wants to keep all seven packs on the roster. He wants to keep all seven guys happy. That's going to be more so easier said than done. But behind Najee Harris, the question that has always been with Nick Saban is who wants it, more, who wants it bad enough and who, and who will do those things to ensure that they're going to have that time to get on the field. So the four guys in Harris, Brian Robinson, uh, Keelan Robinson, and Trey Sanders, the tide will find a way to work all four of them onto the field. But then the question becomes the three freshmen. Everybody wants to see the young guys <laughs> take the field. How will Alabama give you out the carry in terms of the young blood, the, the young kind of the freshmen? Folks, lock it in here at the Voice of College Football. Uh, we've got reports uh, coming your way every day, including live streams, call-in shows. So you need to subscribe, hit the bell for the notifications, and lock it in right here. We're hearing from uh, Stephen M. Smith of TouchdownAlabama.com. And, of course, you go there for the very best in Tide football talk. All right, the wide receivers, of course, uh, uh, Jerry Judy posted the two of the more prolific seasons in the history of the school. Uh, Bolitnikoff Award winner from 2018. He moves on. Jerry Judy, very uh, uh, Henry Ruggs, I should say, productive, but certainly gained most of his NFL prowess uh, in terms of a prospect at the scouting combine with his blazing speed. Uh, this wide receiver position has been so stacked and so well recruited recently in particular that I still rate uh, – Alabama with two of the three best wide receivers in the SEC, even after losing two of the best. Uh, so Devontae Smith, obviously, uh, as a freshman, uh, penned his name in the history of college football. And and we can go from there in regards to Jalen Waddell and the rest of the crew and how you see the uh, pass catch distribution and who's going to be on the field the most uh, this season, Stephen. Well, Smith and Waddle are the two elder statesmen. It's kind of weird saying that because they're both <laughs> young guys. But you know, Smith and Waddle, the two elder statesmen, you know what to expect from those two. Devontae Smith, the route runner, the long strider. He's not going to burn you with 4-3, four, 4-4 four, four speed. But he's deceptively fast, walks back to the quarterback, runs precise routes. Kind of reminds you of what Marvin Harrison did in his entire career with the Indianapolis Colts with Peyton Manning, you know, at that quarterback position, throwing him the football. Jalen Waddle, more so the explosive play guy, the highlight guy, the light in a bottle type of playmaker. Now, people respect his game on special teams, but he looks to prove that just as good as he is as a punt returner, kick returner, he's just that explosive as a receiver. The question will be, is that next wave of talent, and this is where... Holman Wiggins, the wide receivers coach, Nick Saban, this is where they develop the next group of guys because you've got a John Mechie who played a little bit last year, had ability to be kind of what Calvin Ripley was 
during his time at Alabama, but he's got to be able to show that on the field for a whole season and do that consistently. If you look at a John Metchie, behind him there's a Slay Bolden. You know, could he be the one to pop this season? Bolden, when he came out of West Monroe, Louisiana, in, 20, in the 2018 class, who was the Gatorade Player of the Year 2017, from the state of Louisiana. He played quarterback, he played wide receiver, he played some in the secondary as well. In high school, when I got a chance to talk to guys on the team last season, they sort of compared him to one Julian Edelman of the New England Patriots. So there's uh, Slade Bolden. And then you also got Xavier Williams, another wide receiver from the Florida area that not too many people talk about. When I watched him run scout team last year, He's got the size, he's got the speed, he's got the hands, very clean route runner, but doesn't draw a lot of your attention because, as you mentioned, Alabama stays so stacked at the, at the receiver position. And then you add in a couple of freshmen who have come in, Javon Baker from Georgia, uh, Treshawn Holden from California, Bayou Jones-Bell, another guy from the Florida area. So uh, behind Smitty and Waddle. It's the idea from, from receivers, Coach Holman Wiggins, and also Nick Saban, crafting that next wave, and who's ready to pop to help with Smitty and Waddle for this season. It could be Mechie. A lot of fans are excited about Mechie. It could be Bolden. It could be Xavier Williams. Just who's ready to pop, and we will figure that out as we go through the summer, as Alabama starts the kind of 7-on-7, seven 11-on-11 seven, 11 11 type thing. And, of course, when ball camp comes into play, we'll figure some things out. But right now, if I had to guess the pulse of the fan base, Mark, uh, their poker chips are stacked to John Mechie as the number three guy. Well, Bama, of course, uh, produced another first-round offensive line prospect for the NFL in Jedrick Wills. They do return four starting offensive linemen, technically have 15 on scholarship. It should be another outstanding group. And I know that it's, Stephen, near and dear to your heart. The offensive line. Absolutely. And I feel like this this year's group knows the expectations set for it. I mean, uh, you know, this year's group has the talent, the depth, and the hunger across the board to either match what the 2012 group did for Nick Saban or possibly go above and beyond. So Kyle Blood knows the climate that he's got back. You mentioned the four guys returning, you know, as starters with Landon Dickerson and uh, Evan Neal, Alex Netherwood, and Deontay Brown. Of those four guys, three of those guys were former five stars in Dickerson, you know, Netherwood, and Neal. I mean, you got Deontay Brown, who's an absolute road trader at the run game, but he's also very solid in pass protection. The question that Nick Saban has is, do I take Evan Neal and move him from left guard and put him at right tackle? If Saban does this, it will give him two bookend six foot six and taller tackles for the first time in his tenure in Alabama. Seeing how Evan Neal is six seven, Alex Netherwood is a legit six foot six. So along with that, they would open up an opportunity at left guard for somebody. Whether that would be uh, um, a Neil Ikior Jr. or a uh, Daria Dalcor or even a Pierce Quick, who was a four star in the 2019 class from Hewitt Trustville High School here in Alabama in that Birmingham area. And the funny thing about Pierce Quick, he has created a lot of buzz this summer in the in-person voluntary workouts. I've gotten a chance to talk to quite a few people within the program, and they've talked about how he's an overachiever. He wants to go above and beyond. He wants to do more work. I mean, this is a guy that's got explosive bunny feet. As he had a 54-inch uh, box jump, and when I talked to one of the coaches he worked with in high school, that being Rudy Griffin, who is now the head coach of Bessemer City High School, he spoke on when Quick is on the field, he wants to do more than beat you. He wants to embarrass you so badly that your mom feels it, your dad feels it, your grandmother feels it, feels it. he wants to embarrass you on the field if you are an opposing defensive lineman. Uh, Griffin feels like Pierce Quick is a three-year guy and off the NFL. He feels like he's got that type of talent to be a first-round guy. He's a tough guy. He's got a mean streak. He's got a nastiness to him. He's a physical, physical dude. And he's added on more 
firmness or muscle to his body at 6'5", 291 pounds. If Pierce Quick was to start at next guard this season, an Alabama left to right would have Alex Netherwood, Pierce Quick, Landon Dickerson, Deontay Brown, and Evan Neal. Alabama would have not just the most talented and the most uh, athletic offensive line, but the, but the meanest, the most dominant, the fiercest group in college football. And they're going to need that just due to there will be some matchups this season that Coach Dave is going to want to lead on this group and say, guys, give me a 10, 12, 15 play drive. Let's run the football. Let's eat some clock. Produce me a drive. So this offensive line under, under uh, Kyle Flood, Mark, is Joe Moore Award for disappointment. They've got a lot of expectations on them, and they're, and they're ready to deliver those. Folks, let's you get your comments below on how this Alabama offense compares to the very best units in college football, whether that be Oklahoma, Ohio State, Clemson, and possibly if LSU is able to keep up the kind of pace uh, or anything close to what their 2019 production was. Again, Stephen M. Smith of TouchdownAlabama.com joining us to break down the tide. Lock it in right here as well. Stephen, we will catch you next time. We always appreciate the breakdown. Absolutely, Mark. You take care.